It's springtime, baby. You might say it's February, but it's 73 degrees outside. The Just Vibing shirt is on. The chameleon shorts, they're out. The flip-flops, oh baby, they never left. But you know what? Sometimes Frank pees on them when I'm not looking, so I gotta be really careful about putting them on without checking first for some big pee stains. And folks, today, it's a new season, a new me. We eased back in, but no longer. Sorry about that, Frank. Let me fix my mic here. Enough easing in. Today we ask ourselves, how can we make our projects not doo-doo garbage shit? Uh, and I have a really simple, kind of clean tip that I wanted to give to you. It's gonna be real quick, just gonna slide in and slide out. I got a lot going on. I'm a busy man, I got a puppy right here. He's very sweet, he's very cute. And he's such a good boy. He does pee and poop everywhere, but we still love him. So I'm gonna tell you about it really quick. It's gonna seem really simple, but this is something that I haven't done myself ever. And it kind of hit me like a brick wall as I was listening to this project uh, that I posted last week in my video about easing in. Go watch that, give it more views, hit the like button, hit subscribe. Please make me feel good about what I'm doing and how I'm spending my time. Would you like to go down? Off you go. And I was listening to it. And I was like, huh, this sounds kind of stale. Why? And then it occurred to me, it's really easy in your scenes to say to yourself, I'm just going to process this differently. I'm going to put it through a high pass filter. I'm going to put it through a low pass filter, et cetera, et cetera. Where I think I've gone wrong is kind of ignoring the fine toothed details um, and, and sort of finessing the best sound I can get. And in this instance, it's very simple. All it is, is changing the volume of certain samples, certain parts of your track, dependent on how you're processing them. So for instance, in this track, Frank wants back up. For instance, for instance, in this track, I have uh, a high pass filter and a low pass filter. Now with a high pass filter, it sort of highlights, surprisingly, or perhaps unsurprisingly, the highs of my snare. So maybe it would be smart to reduce the volume of my snare a little bit so that when I fade it in, when I fade the track in to its full volume, it hits a little harder. We feel that impact a little more. It's very pleasant. So let's go ahead and listen to that really quick. Great, uh, that's fine. But the issue is this volume, and this volume are the exact same. The only thing that's different is that there are some frequencies missing. So it can be kind of stale, kind of boring, kind of lackluster to have that volume stay entirely the same. So what I think is smart maybe is turning down the volume a bit. So it sounds something like this. Now that snare, now that snare is much further back in the mix, and it feels like something that will be pulled in with the rest of the mix, with the frequencies. Um, it feels funny to put this much talk into just, hey, turn the volume down on this thing, but really, I, I think it goes a long way, and, and that's the beauty of this. It's a simple tip and really easy to do, but I, I think it'll take your tracks kind of to the next level a little bit in terms of processing your scene. So let me, let's, let's just fade in, we'll see. That 808 is too loud. I recognized that uh, when I was listening back to it. And that's just my toxic trait. You know, I like having my 808s really loud. And if you don't like it, well, move to a different YouTube channel, okay? It's a free YouTube channel. You can get out of here. Anyway, so that was one thing that I did. Um, another thing that I did was the 808 here, speaking of being too loud. If we come over to this low pass filter, which sounds really nice. Great, but we have the same problem. It does the same exact thing when I flip it over here. Same exact volume, just the frequencies are a little different. And in fact, it might even sound a little too loud in the low pass because those low frequencies are being so uh, centralized and, and singled out. So something that might be smart maybe is to do the exact same thing. We're gonna turn it down like 20 or so, and let's listen to how that sounds. Ooh, 
Ooh. I, I, that's a nice butt link. Thank you for showing that to all the people at home. Um, yeah, that's it. That's literally it. And this is a really simple tip, and I understand that. Um, and I think that's the beauty of it, because it sort of woke me up in the middle of the night. Like, why have I not been doing this for the last three years I've been using the Octatrack? Why has this not occurred to me? And I honestly, I think it's because it's so simple that it just, it you know, some things... <sighs> The Octatrack is so complicated, it's so complex, there's so much going on, that a simple solution like just modulating your volume just even a little bit between scenes can kind of go over your head because you're so focused on all these high-level things, like the scenes and parts and shits and charts, that like it's so easy to completely overlook this really simple thing that can make your tracks just a little bit more dynamic, feel a little less stale, a little bit less like it's just a looping uh, collection of samples, uh, which is something I struggle with a lot. So. That's it. I thought I would just kind of shove that out there to you on this beautiful Friday. Uh, for people watching it on YouTube, it's going to be a Monday or a Tuesday or maybe a Thursday if I forget to upload my video, much like I did this last week. But I hope you liked it. I hope that it's been useful to you in some way, shape, or form. And I hope that you'll come back next week and watch me make a different video. Maybe I'll make that template like I said I would. Who knows? I don't follow through on anything. I'm unreliable. You can call me Tony because I am a frosted flake. And, you know, I just, uh, sometimes I don't feel like it. You know, that's relatable, right? Isn't it relatable to say you're going to do something and then not do it? My New Year's resolution is to break my New Year's resolutions, and you can't stop me. I hold the power in this relationship. You think we're friends, but we're not. You don't know me or my demons. Anyway, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me and my boy Frank today. We really appreciate it. Say you appreciate it. Good boy, Frank. You could have sat down with anybody on the internet, but instead you chose to sit down with us, a very sleepy pug and a very fat man with a beard that is getting unruly. My mustache hairs are covering over my lips. I keep biting it. Just trim your mustache hairs, they tell me. I don't have mustache scissors. Sorry, I'm not a mustache scientist. Uh, but I think it's really awesome, and I hope that you'll join us uh, next week. But until then, I'm Daniel. This is Frank. That's Link. His full name is S. Lincoln Log Dumb Dog Wolf. The S stands for sausage. This is The Messy Desk, and I love you more than I love realizing I should have been doing something super simple and super easy all along. We'll see you next week.